Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Ash Tucker and you're watching my brand new series, Photography Unraveled. Photography Unraveled is my brand new series where I help all of you guys who want to come into photography but you don't know where to get started. I'll be taking you guys through a series of videos that helps you decide exactly what, what camera type you should buy, what lenses are available to you, crop sensor versus full frame cameras and even how you can edit your pictures to make them as perfect as possible. So without further ado, let's hop into episode number one. This episode, episode number one, is all about the different types of cameras available on the market at the moment. If you are out shopping, you've got four options available. The DSLR camera, the mirrorless camera, the bridge camera, and the compact camera. Now the DSLR camera is the oldest type of camera out of all four options. DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex. DSLR cameras are also the biggest and the bulkiest type out of all four. And the reason for this is because they fit a large mirror system inside these cameras. Now the way these mirror systems work is that light enters through the lens, hits a small mirror, that small mirror reflects this light up the camera, which hits a second mirror, that second mirror reflects this light horizontally, which goes through the viewfinder and into your eyes. Now, when you want to take a picture up with a DSLR camera, you can go ahead and press capture. When you press capture, the first mirror lifts up, revealing the sensor underneath. So light would go straight through the lens, hit the sensor. That sensor would then absorb this light and turn it into a digital image that you can see on your screen. Now with DSLR cameras, you can also interchange lenses. Lenses is a whole separate topic I wanna go over in episode three. However, it is nice to know that if you were doing a lot of scenic shots, you could put on a nice wide angle lens. If you were doing a lot of portrait shots, you could put on a nice prime lens that lets you create that blurry background. Or if you were going on safari and you know animals were really far away that you wanted to zoom into, you can opt for a nice telephoto zoom lens. Now, DSLR cameras are absolutely amazing. They take great pictures and having the option of interchangeable lenses makes them incredibly versatile. However, there are some downsides to the DSLR. Firstly, DSLRs are quite big and bulky because they need to fit a mirror system that goes on the inside. And secondly, DSLR cameras can be quite slow. Every time you want to take a picture, the mirror has to lift up, the light has to hit the sensor, the mirror then comes back down. When you want to take the second picture, the mirror lifts up again, the light hits the sensor and the mirror comes back down. So if you were doing any kind of, if you were doing any kind of sports photography and you were taking a burst of photos of someone running, then that, when you hold down the shutter button, that mirror system would have to lift up and back down every single time a picture is taken. Now, depending on the DSLR that you've bought, if it's a budget DSLR, that motion of the mirror lifting up and down may not be that fast and you may not get the desired effect that you want. Now DSLR cameras are great. They take great pictures and having the option of interchangeable lenses makes them incredibly versatile. However, DSLR cameras can be quite big and bulky. This leads me on to the second type of camera, which is the mirrorless camera. Now the mirrorless camera is essentially the same as the DSLR camera. The mirrorless camera takes great photos and you also get interchangeable lenses. However, the advantage of a mirrorless camera compared to a DSLR camera is that mirrorless cameras can be quite smaller. Now the reason for this is in the name. DSLR cameras fit the large mirror system, however mirrorless cameras don't fit that large mirror system, hence the name mirrorless cameras. So the way a mirrorless camera would work is light would go through the lens and hit the sensor directly, forming that digital picture. Now, even though the mirrorless camera is essentially the same as a DSLR camera, there are two major downsides. The first major downside of a mirrorless camera is that they can be quite pricey compared to their DSLR counterpart. The second major downside is that in a mirrorless camera, the sensor is exposed completely. So if you were to take the lens off, the sensor is completely exposed to sunlight or dust or any kind of damage directly. Whereas with a DSLR camera, because you've got that mirror in the way first, the sensor isn't affected directly by harsh sunlight. Whereas with a mirrorless camera, if you take off the lens and you know the sensor faces harsh sunlight, that could be dangerous. Or if you're in a quite a dusty environment or you know if, a, if you get a water droplet or something on it, that can be quite dangerous to the sensor and potentially could ruin the camera and you wouldn't want to ruin a really expensive mirrorless camera, would you? Now, just to reiterate, the DSLR camera and the mirrorless camera are essentially the same thing. They're both great for photography. Um, they have a very similar type of lens 
range. Um, there's no major advantage of buying one type of camera over the other. Um, it's just dependent on which one you like. And however, I like I did say before, the DSLR camera is way cheaper, can be way cheaper than the mirrorless counterpart. So definitely look into that when you're considering buying a camera. Now, going into the third type of camera, which is the bridge camera. The bridge camera does not come with any interchangeable lenses. It comes with one fixed lens. However, that one fixed lens has a large focal length. And essentially what that means is when you turn on the camera, it starts with a nice wide angle view, which is great for scenic shots, you know, nice scenery or nice landscapes. And if you go on safari or something and you want a great zoom, then you can start zooming in with the camera the lens would zoom in and you can take nice close-ups. So the main advantage of having a bridge camera is that you wouldn't have to carry extra lenses. I'm not a big fan of bridge cameras because the overall quality that you're getting with bridge cameras isn't the same as what you would with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Now, if you are one of those people that don't wanna carry extra lenses and you just want one camera that has a nice wide angle view as well as a great zoom, then the bridge camera is perfect for you. However, I personally am not a big fan of them because one, again, they can be quite big and large to carry. And the second thing is the quality that you get with a bridge camera isn't exactly the same as what you would with a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera. That's essentially it for a bridge camera. There's not more that I need to say, but again, if you are interested in buying a bridge camera, definitely go into a camera shop and check it out, try it for yourself and see if that's something that you'd wanna buy. Now, finally, moving on to the compact camera. The compact camera is the smallest one out of all four options available, as the name has it, compact. Um, the compact camera is one of my favorite cameras out of all four options available. Even though it does not have interchangeable lenses, you still get amazing wide angle scenery shots and amazing close up macro shots as well. So the compact camera is essentially for anyone that doesn't wanna to carry too much weight on them. Um, it's just a camera that you can have in your pocket, pull out at any time to take amazing pictures and videos. Now the compact camera is very similar to the bridge and the mirrorless camera in the sense that the light would go through the lens and hit the sensor directly, creating a nice digital image for you on the screen. So if you are a person that doesn't wanna have extra lenses, you don't wanna carry a large camera, you just want something nice and small that fits in your pocket that you can pull out at any time to take amazing pictures, then the compact camera is the one to go for. Now, out of all four camera options, I personally have two recommendations. Either go for the mirrorless camera where you have interchangeable lenses, or you can go for the compact camera, or you can go for both. That's episode one, done. Go in the comment section below and tell me exactly what camera you would wanna buy out of all four options. And if I haven't answered any of your questions in this video, then go and comment them down below and I'm gonna try answering as many questions as I can. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a massive thumbs up and go and subscribe and stay tuned for episode number two. But yeah, don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up. I'll see you guys in episode two. See ya.